Hi, I'm Jamie McKinnon from McKinnon Water Solutions. Today, I'm going to show you how to change a UV bulb and filters on a Greenway 330 UV system. First, what we do is, of course, this unit, the valves are on the other side of the wall, but you turn the valves off to just shut all water off to the unit. So there's a ball valve here, and there will be a ball valve up here. As you can see on the display, we have 300 days left, so obviously we're doing this for an explanation. When you get close to, say, 10 to 20 days, it's nice for you to call us and receive your filter and your UV ball, and then have it ready to go. So, I like to have gloves on when I'm doing this, because if you touch the UV bulb, the grease from your hands will shorten the life of the bulb. So this way, it's nice to have a pair of gloves on. And second of all, when you're touching the filters, you're not getting your hands on the filters. So now, again, I've shut the valves off. There is a release button up here. It's a black button that relieves the pressure from the filter housings. With these particular ones, a wrench does come with them, but usually you can do it but just by hand, myself. So I, I unspin it, and I don't take it off all the way. Sometimes what I like to do is hit that button and move it side to side. And as you can see, it's dropped and the water's coming out. The nice thing is you don't get that rush of water. It's draining as I'm doing this. Once it's drained, satisfactory, unspin it. hard to do this without making a little bit of a mess, so don't be surprised if you get water. And the water will drink, keep draining. With a rag, I like to wash out the inside of the container if there is some sediment in there. With this particular model, as you can see, there's two filters. This is a double sump UV. This first one is a five micron filter to pre-take out any sediments. And this one is a charcoal filter to remove any tastes or odors. With the filters off, this is when I like to do the light because I know that my water pressure is off or else we'd be getting soaked right now. So this way, I know that there's no pressure built up in this chamber. Next, we're going to remove the UV lens. This is just to show you that the light is on and working. So it's a quarter twist and pull. You expose the shell of the light, remove electrical. Take this, you can discard this. Um, it has trace amounts of mercury in it I believe so you may want to dispose of it properly. Next you're going to grab the knurled part, unscrew this, remove this and as you can see here there's an o-ring on the quartz sleeve. You remove the o-ring And in this one, there may be some water still in there, so you may want to grab a bucket. The quartz sleeve can be tricky to remove. I recommend sometimes we need a, a tool the first time to remove it. So you may want to wipe it off. And again, this is the hard part. And you may want to spin it and it'll come out. But again, be careful, it's glass. So if it breaks, if you don't have gloves on, you're going to get the, the shards in your, in your hand. And again, there might be some water to come out, so you may want a bucket underneath, but this one was drained. And what do we do? As you can see, this quartz sleeve is actually very clean. 
Um, if there is a build on of it, put some vinegar on a rag. The vinegar will cut any of the hardness or iron that's on the tube itself. So we just want to give that a cleaning. As you can see, this one's nice and clean. We can reinsert it. It has fingers back there that it just pushes into. So I have my new bulb. This one is again a 330S as it's a standard output bulb. I remove the two ends. Inside the container, there's two new O-rings that come with it. Those O-rings are what holds the water back from coming out between the canister and the quartz sleeve. So I put my new O-ring on there. Next, we put on the view cap. And of course, our knurled piece, which is put on. We screw that on. I generally go only hand tight with that. If you use tools, sometimes it's too tight. So again, I just give it a good crank that it's hand tight. Next, we grab our bulb. And again, what we want to do is hold it by this part. Again, even with gloves on, I try not to touch the glass portion. We insert that. As you can see, there's prongs. There's the female prong and the male prong. They only go one way. So if you put it on and it doesn't fit, you just turn it quarter turn and then it'll move on. Then we push it in to here and then we turn our quarter turn. So again, we insert into here. It'll find its position and turn a quarter turn. And of course, every time we change the bulb, we always change the filters. And again, this has to be done at least once a year, minimum. But again, in most cases, once a year is fine. It's a five micron filter. Put it into the housing. I lubricate the O-rings at times. This one was already well lubricated, as you can see. It's got lots of silicone grease on it, especially made for water. We put the O-ring on outside. We take the, the ring, insert the ring over, put it up into the unit. It's, it's shaped like a V, so you do not have to over tighten these. Again, with this one, I like to just tighten it by hand first. If you use a wrench, you'll need a bigger wrench to get it off. As you can see, up here there's a silver button. You press and hold that button. It generally takes about 10 seconds to reset. Keep holding it, you can see the reset, and it'll go 365. At that time, you can let go. Once the light is illuminated and there's no errors, you can slowly open the water valve to put water into the system. Sometimes I like to hold the bar relief valve up here. It's just uh, to relieve pressure, but it helps to eliminate the air coming out of it. So if I press that, slowly open, try not to shock it. Again, slowly open the valve, then press this, and it takes its time to fill up. And of course, checking for leaks. So as you can see, I have no leaks. Everything is nice and tight. You may want to open up a tap relieve some of the air that's of course going to be entrapped. This being a double sump, it has a charcoal on one side. You may have a little bit of discolored water for a short period of time and also oxygen in the water. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and you can always visit us at mckinnonwater.com. Thanks.